Hey folks, this is Johnny. Welcome to another Home Studio Trainer Show. It's my second time trying to do this uh, video. Uh, we're going to take a look at more mixing tips. And a question came up today. Um, I want to print my event effects. What's the best way to do it? You can do a bounce. Sure you can, but there's an even easier way that can always be undone even after you have... Uh, done other edits there are some things that can't be undone unless you go back through all of the edits you made afterwards to get to the one thing bouncing is one of them but here's a really good way uh to actually get these things printed so that you don't have to do that all right so uh let's see uh, if you guys could i'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to my channel uh like this video click uh notifications and subscribe <laughs> You know, I never get that right. So, uh, you know what to do. Just uh, do those three things right there. Like, subscribe, get notified. And if you want to do a fourth and really help out the channel, you can actually click the join button to support the channel. And for a couple bucks a month, you can actually help me, uh, you know, continue to do what I do here. So, very cool. Here we go. Uh, we are actually uh, in the classroom here. And I don't know where my video is. Let's see if I can get my video. Not that you really need to see my video but let's see i really don't want to start this uh video over again so there we go whoa there we go there's more than you bargained for all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to take event effects and actually print them to the track but be able to undo them later no matter how many edits you've made afterwards so if you take a look at uh the inspector this is the real important piece to this if you click on the letter I here, it opens up the inspector and you see you've got a lot of different things that you can take a look at. So here are some of the track properties that you can choose from, especially if you want to delay your track or maybe have it run a little bit ahead of the whole song. And the follow chords option, layers, time stretch, tempo, all of that stuff is there. Now below, you have a lot of the editing capabilities for each of the events in a certain track now remember this section here is event specific so if I was to actually chop this track up into little pieces each event would have its own set of options just like that so let's go ahead and take this I'm gonna chop this up twice I'm gonna make three pieces one two three and if you look closely especially at the timeline I can affect and adjust each of these pieces independently this makes it really nice if you're actually um, if you want to control some volume levels or maybe just cut out a little piece and put an effect on one word or something like that, I'm going to show you kind of how to do that. I don't have a vocal track here, but I do have something that I want to do. I want to highlight the fill here at the end with a little bit of reverb. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to do a control Z and undo these little pieces. There we go. So what I want to do is in this song... <laughs> Just the drum part. So let's go ahead and solo the drum part. All right. So what I want to do is I want to put a reverb on this. So I'm going to go here. I can either click the wheel on my mouse to get this little toolbox. I can also just right click and get another um, option for uh, tools. I think I have to do it this way. There we go. I can do it this way. So you got to cl right click in a blank area. But I like, uh, since I have a mouse with a wheel, I'm just going to click on the wheel. I'm going to use my knife tool. So. so now I just want it to reverb from here. I'm going to turn off the snapping from here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So let's see. Do I want to... Oh, I got know what I'm going to do. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to do this right here. This little double snare hit. And right there. So just this. So now what I'm going to do is if you click just on the event that you've created, you can see that all of these options are unique to this section. Even the event effects. Now, a lot of people have shown that all you have to do is go to your effects and I'm going to use the mix verb here, and there it is. And you can just drag this right to here, and if you hit the Alt 
key, it'll just insert that effect on that piece. However, there is a second way to do this. So the second way to do this is to actually look over here. And if you look over here where my mouse is here, all the way on the left of your screen, you can see there's an event effects option. And if I enable that, you can see an inserts section very similar to the inserts that's here. But remember, if you put an effect here, you're going to affect all of the events in a track. If you put the effect just here, it's just like alt dragging the effect to that event. So I just wanted to show you guys here, watch this. I'm gonna go way over here. I'm gonna take this reverb and I'm gonna bring it all the way over here on the insert. Boom, now this is here. So now this is only going to affect this piece. If I click on another event in my track, you can see that all that goes away and I would have to enable or alt drag an effect onto that event. But we're gonna be working with this event right here. So I just want those double snare hits to be audible with reverb. So here we go here. Right now, and you can see that it's open. If you want to access that again, this is the part that you'll have to actually go over here for. Double click, and now I can have this. All right, since it's stereo, my reverb is stereo. I'm just going to open up the size, a little bit of pre delay, and let's see. Nice. All right, so let's see. Do I want, I'm going to raise the volume of this just a little bit and I'm going to increase the mix and the size and now let's listen to the whole part and you can hear that it will carry off into the looped area so in other words the reverb will continue even after the part loops if it's going to loop nice okay so now in a case like this it's important to look at a few things i'm actually going to turn off the looping and i'll show you why so if I wanted to actually print this, I can do a right click and I can do a bounce. Bounce selection and it'll print. See an error occurred, clipping has occurred. Oh, okay, I don't care about the clipping. Now, see the only problem with that, since I did it in a center section, the reverb cuts off at the end of the event. Now, this is going to be interesting. I actually didn't plan for this. <laughs> so we're going to see. I, I knew that that would happen on the render, or I'm sorry, on the bounce. But I wonder what it's going to do to the render. It's really going to be interesting. Okay, so I'm going to do a Control z and now I'm back to the live reverb. So this will be interesting because I don't know what's going to happen. So uh, I'm going to try the render option here. Now, like I said, the bounce... If I was to do the bounce, it couldn't be undone. If I did a bunch of edits afterwards, I would ha actually have to re-undo um, all of those edits to get to this. With the render option, you can undo it at any time outside of the undo section. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click render. Ah, see, it still did the same thing. That's interesting. I did not plan for this. So how do I get out of this? And you guys know how I like to do stuff kind of live here. So let's see if we can get out of this. I don't think that we can. I don't think that there's any way. I don't think that there's any way. No, see, I cannot get that reverb to tail now. But you, you can hear that it's it's been printed to this piece. So let's see here. If I go here, let's try something. Let's go ahead and check play overlaps. Okay, so now I'm going to actually go to the undo. Undo, okay, so I have to undo back. So 
song. I need to go edit, undo, resize event. Edit, undo, resize event. Undo, resize event. Undo, resize event. Undo, size. I, I just got to go back. Okay, undo volume curve. All right. All right. So now the reverb is live again. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click play overlaps. I don't know if this is going to work. So this is going to be interesting here. Okay, so that part's working. So if I hit render. No, it still does it. It still does it. That is interesting. So, okay, so now once you actually do the render, you can see that there is an option here to restore. There we go. Now we're back to the live reverb. That is ins inserted on this event. So this is interesting. So how do I get out of this? Or can I even? All right, I've all already got it to play overlaps. So let's do this. Okay, so you can see here that we have a tail option. So now I've got it set to zero. So that's, of course, going to cut off that reverb. So what if I set it to... What if I set it to one... I'm going to set it to one second. I'm going to hit render. Okay, you see what it did there? All right, so now here's the, here's the thing that I was thinking of. If I have it not play overlaps, it still cuts off. So I need to have it play overlaps if I'm going to render something like a reverb on, a, on an event in the middle of a track. All right, so let's see how it sounds when it loops. Hmm. Not a very functional effect. Not a very functional effect, but you see what I had to do there. And this is this is why I love doing my videos this way, because I end up discovering a lot of stuff in the process. OK, so. Here's the issue. If you're going to put something like a reverb with a tail that goes longer than the event that you're processing, you're most likely going to have to uh, allow it to play the overlaps. OK, so how would I get out of this? So you can see that for the looping, it really doesn't work. However, if I was to extend the end of the song, so I'm going to take this first. I'm going to hold the Alt key and I'm going to bring this over here. So now if I do this now, we'll be able to hear the full length of the reverb on that event. And like I did before, I'm going to select this event. I'm going to turn it up a little bit so that that hit is a little harder. Whoops, I did the wrong one. Control C. There we go. It's this one. OK, so now it'll work. So you can see here that the render option gave me the ability to actually uh, play the whole fade of the reverb completely from the hit to the end of the reverb tail and still have it be audible, even though it's overlapping the other events. In order to do that, you need to make sure play overlaps is on. If I was to turn this off... It did, it just, just cuts off and the volume goes down. Look at that. So, again, the great thing about this particular function is if I just don't like this, and I've already done a bunch of edits afterwards, as you see, I've actually extended the length of the song and everything, all I have to do is hit restore, and everything is back to normal. <laughs> 
there you go. So I can just actually right click and remove this reverb and. <laughs> So now we don't need all this mess. I can take this and I can shorten this back down to where it belongs like that. And I can turn off the play overlaps. And everything's back to normal. Now if I want, I can actually join all of these events again and make them solid if I want. And for that, I can use the bounce or I can hit the G key to merge uh, whatever I want to do. So there you go. There is the render option and the things that you can and can't do as we actually all discovered together. If you're going to play some sort of an effect that has a tail in the middle of your track, you have to uh, you have to make way for that tail. The way to make way for that tail, once you actually do the render, uh, you would actually have to go here to this. Enable. Hold on. I don't want to do that. Hold on. Let me go back to the event. There we go. And you would actually have to choose how long you want it to, to uh, sustain for. And then when you actually hit the render option, it's going to pull, uh, put it on top of the existing events that are on your <laughs> that are on your track. Yes, <laughs> I I could have made this really really simple and just done the end of a track or something early on that isn't going to overlap. But that's not how I do things. So I, I may have over convoluted the explanation, but in all actuality, you guys got to see what some of the ramifications are if you're not paying attention to things like reverbs with long tails, being able to adjust the tail when you do a render, and being able to uh, play overlaps if you're going to do that. Okay, so this is the first video for February. I'm going to try to get out a video a day every day for the month of February. And I made that promise before, but then life happens. But so this is just the first um, for the videos in February. Um, what the hell was that? Uh, for the uh, first video of February. And uh, we're going to continue with the mixing and the tracking tips 101. So if you have any suggestions on other videos I can do, little functions like this, please leave those um, suggestions in the comments. Or you can email me at johnny at hst-homestudiotrainer.com. You can also go to Patreon. You can be a free member of Patreon. You get access to some of the stuff there. Uh, if you're a paid member, you can actually contact me there as well I think even the free members can send me a message over there so the link to patreon is in the description all right so I hope I haven't babbled too much here I hope you guys got uh, what's uh, going on here with the render option and things you can and can't do and that is going to be it for me and I'll see you all tomorrow in the next video